Ciao ragazzi, come stai? This is WRT TV's Anthony Ferrara, and this is the last episode of the Rome Global Studies program right here at St. John's University. This is it. This is the end. Within days, the semester, DTW students and I from Rome, Paris, and Seville will be back home in New York City once again. Now, I love Rome. I'm going to miss it dearly. and This has been a great experience for me. And with that, there'll be a new group of students that will share this experience as well, whether they'll be in Rome, Seville, Paris, or even all three for the Discover the World program. I hope that they've been looking at the series and the other students that want to study in the future take a look at this series as well. But we're going to cap it off with 10 tips for studying abroad. Now, this is not only my personal experience but other personal experiences that I gathered from students in the past and I put it all together to hopefully make something out of it and be very very helpful for the future if you are studying abroad. Number one, that time has come. The time has come. You've been packing your life away for four months. You're gonna get on that plane to go to your respective study abroad location without seeing friends or family for a long time. Now that's a negative connotation but that's okay because once you get off the plane to wherever you're studying abroad your atmosphere will change. Everything around you, everything you see will be such a positive influence and it will be overwhelming in a good way. Number two, walk around the area. Now after you get off the plane, you get settled at your study abroad location and you go through all the orientation sessions, I recommend you go walk around the area that you're staying in. It can be frightening being in a new city, so go with a couple of friends, maybe two or three or maybe ten. Go see all the fabulous monuments that are around, all the places that you can shop for clothes and food and knickknacks, and even go see all the squares that are around where people gather and just do all sorts of things. You'll probably see something that you saw before in New York City, because after all, New York City is one of the most diverse cities in the world. Number three, meeting locals. Now it's a little different. You're in a new culture, in a new city, meeting locals that probably don't speak English. But I'll tell you honestly, they're very nice people and some of them do actually speak English. And they know you're American. They can tell by your language, your body language, everything. So when they see you, they're gonna wanna get to know you and ask about you and talk about you. And you might even make good friends. It's a good way for you to network and make friends and connections in the future. Number four, the language. Now of course in the study abroad location that you're staying in, English is not the primary language. Language. But whatever the primary language is for that location, it's good to know the basics. Such things as hello, goodbye, how are you, I would like this, will get you really far. And no matter where you're staying, if you keep practicing a language, you will get better at it and you'll be even fluent. Verdati, sei un grande aiuto per te. Number five, stereotypes. Now, people, as I said, are gonna know that you're American. The way you talk, the way you act, the way your body language is. Now remember, you're not only representing St. John's, but you're also representing America as well. So when you're here, be on your best behavior and be as respectful in the location and in the culture that you are. Number six, explore. Now you're gonna be in the same city, same location for about five weeks or four months, but why sit there and be bored? Go explore other parts of Europe. It's the reason you're out there in the first place. For example, in Italy, there's not just Rome. There's also Naples and Venice and Florence and Milan and Ferrara. Look it up. It's actually a city, look it up. You have to go explore so that way you get a taste of other languages and other cultures that people live in and it will help you shape your own person for the future. Number seven, time management. Now of course with everything that's going on, it's overwhelming, you wanna do everything at once. Please make sure that you get some sleep. Managing time is the biggest thing here and a lot of students lose out on sleep and it's not good for you whatsoever. If there is a weekend where you're staying in your study abroad location, please take the time to nap and get rest and even have time for yourself. You don't have to go out all the time but of course, it is imperative that you get the rest and the time to rejuvenate your energy for the trip that you're gonna go on soon. Number eight, class. Of course you're going to class. That's why you're studying abroad. Hello, it's in the title. Make sure that you go to class, your homework is done, that you study for your test. Make sure before anything that all that is done so you can enjoy your time and not wait to the last minute. Trust me, you're abroad and you wanna come home with that 4.0. Your parents will be proud. They'll be very proud. Number nine, keep in contact. Now the two biggest problems that students face while they study abroad is culture shock and homesickness. This usually is because the people, the custom, the language, everything is different to them and nothing feels like at home. The best way for you to get rid of that homesickness and that culture shock is for you to talk to people that you miss at home. Give them a call, shoot them a text, tell them that you love them and you miss them and even if you have to, vent and cry if you want to. It's perfectly okay. It's understandable being in a new environment for four months. It's a lot to take on but it's okay. You're not the only one and you're gonna be around people that are gonna do this and get over it together. And finally, number 10, enjoy it. This is a once in a lifetime experience that you may ever get. Who knows if you ever get the chance to come back to Europe. Not only is it a big step in your college career, but also in your personal career as well. It goes really fast. I can remember yesterday making the first episode of this series and now I'm on the last one. So please enjoy it while you're here because once you leave, you're gonna miss every second of it. And that is it for WRAD TV's Discovering Rome series. I wanna thank everybody for letting me do 
gratuitous and thank you for watching. If you haven't seen the other five episodes, I would encourage you to do so and watch the other content that we have. We have our stuff on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at WRDTV. And go follow, share, subscribe, like, comment on everything that you see and everything that you like. For the final time, this has been WRDTV's Anthony Ferrara. And no matter what time you're watching it, come be a part of it. Ciao for now.